So welcome back to lesson two, part two. So we will begin with objective four of lesson two and it's an inspect parts for any mechanical defect. So let us start with the tire of the hand right here. And what are we really looking for? Well, obviously the boot right here is damaged. So dirt and water would eventually wash out the grease and deteriorate the joint. The next thing I'm trying to feel for is a free play, but this joint is tight and gummy. So speaking from a joint perspective, this tie rod end is good. But speaking from the boot perspective, it will need to replace because there's a defective boot. Let us look now on the rock end and I can pull down this boot of course this boot will come with some strap or some clip that I pull down the rock and boot or the rock and pinion boot and as you can see this rock and ball joint right here it is good a matter of fact it is so good it can even support the rock end and the tie rod end so that joint is excellent however the rock and pinion boot there is a tour right here, so this boot will need to change. So over this side, the tie rod end is defective, need to be changed. The rock and pinion boot need to be changed. Let us look over the other side. Starting at the tie rod end. Tie rod and tight, but the boot is also defective. Same thing like the other side. And mm, this boot right here is also defective. And this this joint is fairly good. There's no free play in this joint. I can feel this tight gummy feeling. So the rocking is okay, but the tie rod and boot tie rod end would need to change because of boots torn and the rock and pinion boot need to be changed also if we should look at the rock and pinion body i'll call it the body i'll call it the housing which is the same there's no physical deformation so let us look now an objective five and it said explain the operation of the rock and pinion all right basically this rock and pinion right here, I want you to focus mainly on this rock gear right here. What happened? This pinion here, it has a gear. And this rock gear, this pinion gear will mesh with this rock gear right here. And whenever the steering wheel is turned, like I'm turning it now with the vice grip, it allow the steering to move left or right, all right? And objective six, it's an explain two, two advantages and two limitation of manual rock and pinion. What are the advantages of the manual rock and pinion? It is cheaper to manufacture, it is, Easier to maintain a matter for the only time it need maintenance is when it need grease and adjustment and it is not so expensive for the customer. Those are the advantages of the manual rock and pinion. But if the manual rock and pinion have those advantages, why do we move on to hydraulic power assist? The li major limitation with manual rock and pinion is that it is very hard for the person to operate it requires a lot of manpower a lot of muscle power and that can lead to exhaustion and it is extremely difficult when you're backing up into small places so those are the limitation for the manual rock and pinion and uh, since i'm not going to disassemble this rock and pinion however there are video so there I want you to watch that video on YouTube and watch that video on YouTube and you will see how to disassemble a rock and pinion or rebuild a manual 
rock and pinion. So, in summary, let us summarize lesson two. State two most common type of steering box used on motor vehicle. It is the rock and pinion steering box and the recirculating ball steering box. Explain the purpose of the rock and pinion. The purpose of the rock and pinion is to convert rotor motion of the steering wheel to left and right motion so we can able to turn the vehicle either left or right. All right. Identify the manual operated parts of the rock and pinion. So of course we have the tie rod end, rock end, rock, rock and pinion boot, body of the rock and pinion are housing, adjusting nut, and right here, although I don't mention it, we would call right here the pinion housing because if I should pull this bolt, you will see the pinion. And then it's the same right here. Rock N, rock and boots, tie rod N. So those are the parts that make up the rock and pinion. And then we already inspect the rock and pinion or the entire rock and pinion mechanism. The tie rod N is defective because the boots is worn. The rock and pinion boots is burst up. So, as a result, the boot will have to be changed, the tire at the end will have to be changed. And I already described the operation, the pinion gear, measure the rock gear whenever I turn it, allow the rock to move left and right. And the advantages of the manual rock and pinion, it is cheaper to manufacture, cheaper to service and maintain, it is lighter, take up less space in the vehicle. But the major limitation is that one, it's very difficult for the vehicle to steer and it requires a lot of manpower and that can lead to frustration and stress and lack of concentration. And the advantages of the, well, those are the limitations. Well, we look at technical everything. So that's it.